Sinnoh trilogy comes to its epic conclusion with Arceus and the Jewel of Life, otherwise known as the one where Ash meets God. Cut. You're saying it wrong. Saying what wrong? Arceus. You mean Arceus? No, that's not how it's pronounced. That's how it's spelled. Yeah, but in the show they- The show can't decide which syllable to emphasize in the word Mewtwo. I think there's a little room for deviation. Well, how would you like it if people started calling me Deli Bird? How does that affect me? Can I do the thing now? Yeah, okay. Cool. Thanks. Thousands of years ago, when the land of Machina was nearly destroyed by a meteor shower, Arceus, the Pokémon said to have created all of existence, gave a part of himself to make the land flourish again, creating the Jewel of Life. But when the time came to return the Jewel to Arceus, a man named Damos betrayed him, keeping the Jewel for himself. When Arceus returns to bring mankind to justice, even the combined powers of Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina are not enough to quell his rage, leaving Ash and the gang to rewrite history itself to save humanity from the wrath of a god. So here we are, the final installment in the Sinnoh Trilogy. A story three movies in the making, with legendaries tied to the very fabric of creation itself. A feat the series had never attempted before, nor has it since. And it's a good thing too, because they did not pull it off. Okay, a little backstory, I watched these movies out of order, because I didn't realize there was an order. People were sending in the DVDs, this one showed up first, so I watched it first. When I found out there was actual continuity, I did make sure to rewatch everything in order, and it made almost no difference. This is a trilogy that gains nothing from being a trilogy. This isn't one continuing story, it's three different stories that happen to feature the same legendaries, but have less and less to do with each other with each installment. In the last movie, Giratina's pursuit of Shaman was a subversion of his actual goal, a battle with Dialga. Even though the movie feels cluttered, Giratina flying off at the end makes sense because that's what he wanted all along. But what ties Arceus to the previous films has almost nothing to do with the actual plot. What do these movies have in common? The legendaries. Within the first 10 minutes, they deliver on the promise of another battle between Giratina and Dialga. They also resolve it in the first 10 minutes, but whatever. Return of the Jedi begins with Han Solo coming back, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. And besides, this is all just to set the stage for the battle with Arceus, right? Isn't that the whole point of this one? Isn't that why the Osmond twins here spend the first half hour of this 90 minute movie telling Ash and the gang things they already know? Early on, we're introduced to one-shot expositing sidekicks Sheena and Kevin. Sheena has the power to connect with Pokemon on some spiritual level, while Kevin has the power to be named Kevin. And they both have the power to retcon themselves into past movies to recontextualize everything around Arceus. This was always leading to the climactic moment when Arceus awakens from his thousand year sleep to bring mankind to justice. And what ensues is a battle that rocks the very foundations of reality! Oh wait, no it doesn't. They just shoot beams at each other until you realize that the only reason any of this is happening is so Dialga can send Ash and the gang back to the past and the real story can begin. Now, I'm sure for fans of the Diamond and Pearl games, this moment is awesome. I imagine there's a bit of a thrill in seeing all these legendaries together on the big screen. Or rather, the small screen, because all these movies are now straight to video. But Diamond and Pearl were never my games. All I see is how pointless this all is. This is the event that's supposed to tie all three movies together, and it doesn't matter. The only Pokemon that needs to be here is Dialga. I guess you can make an argument for Palkia as part of a package deal, but the Giratina conflict is resolved so quickly that it almost makes the entire last movie irrelevant. And slogging through this opening is a chore. The exposition isn't just long, it's redundant. And not just because Sheena and Kevin have to repeat themselves every three seconds. Arceus remains intent on bringing us all to justice. Justice? Yes, justice. The recap is unnecessary because Ash and the gang already witnessed these events firsthand. So all this does is bog down the backstory about Arceus. I appreciate that they build Arceus up. If you're going to make a movie about Pokemon God, by all means, lay some groundwork. But we're seeing the same problems here as we did in Giratina. Too many conflicting ideas, all for the sake of a trilogy. Difference is, Giratina's plot had something to do with the trilogy. This one doesn't. The most interesting stuff happens in the past. They're sent back to a time 
time when Pokemon were treated like servants instead of partners. They weren't even called Pokemon, they were called magical creatures. And I'm a sucker for pretty much anything that better develops this world. Steampunk Pokeballs, Pokeball management system, yeah, give me all that. And despite the overdrawn opening, they still take time to develop the setting. It doesn't feel half-assed, but the story still suffers. For one, they don't seem to understand how time travel works. One of the first things Sheena does is give us this little tidbit. Long ago, there was a thunder creature and its master and they changed the fate of this town. Which of course foreshadows Ash saving the day, as is his want. But he hasn't done that yet because history is still playing out as if he hasn't. So how is there already a legend about him? Scratch that, how is there already another legend about him? And then the movie borrows a device from Back to the Future when it looks like they might actually fail. Under the logic that if Arceus were killed instead of injured, there'd be no reason for them to come back to the past. Except the same would apply if Arceus had never been betrayed in the first place, which is exactly what they're trying to accomplish. Either way, it's an altered past that prevents a future disaster. Marty McFly fading out of existence is dependent on two mutually exclusive outcomes. Either his parents get together, or they don't. Here, either Ash doesn't need to come back to the past, or he doesn't need to come back to the past. It doesn't matter why, it's the same result either way. Now, if they didn't at least try something like this, then time travel would have just been a really cheap plot device. But this doesn't even hold up under typical movie pseudoscience standards. It just makes a weak story even weaker. And my gosh, is Wasted Potential just the slogan of the Sinnoh Trilogy? I know, I'm repeating myself, but once again, we have a movie full of great ideas that don't pan out. During the info dump, we learn that Sheena is actually a descendant of Damos, the man who betrayed Arceus. But once they get to the past, it's revealed almost instantly that history is wrong. Damos had every intention of returning the jewel to Arceus, but was manipulated by his right-hand man, Jafar. Okay, his name isn't Jafar, it's Marcus, but I'm just gonna call him Jafar because he's freaking Jafar! He's more Jafar than Baron Alberto was Gaston, and that's pretty Jafar. On a scale of 1 to 10 of being Jafar, he actually stops being Jafar, transcends physical form to become a being of pure energy, but that energy just turns out to be pure, unrefined essence of Jafar. Only where Jafar was sly and charismatic, this guy is probably the worst Pokemon villain to date. He's just evil, and not in a fun way like Phantom or, hell, even the Iron Mask Marauder. And seriously, how does no one suspect this guy of foul play? Hey, Sheena, you gonna read between the lines here? Or are you too caught up in your ancestral guilt to notice the neon sign hanging over this guy's head? I do appreciate that they at least give Sheena an arc. She's so desperate to make things right that she can't see what's right in front of her, and I like that. A major theme of this movie is reconciliation. Obviously between God and man, but also between Sheena and Damos. And she learns that the burden of what essentially amounts to original sin was never hers to bear. But my gosh, Jafar is practically brainstorming better ways to kill Arceus right in front of her and it goes right over her head. I don't think this character was even necessary. I'm almost tempted to say that the exposition about Arceus is redundant because we see the same story play out in flashbacks, but by the time that happens, we've met Damos. By the way, that's Dan Green lending his voice again. Wait, you're saying you know me? Yes, of course! He's been humanized to the audience, so this is kind of like seeing the same story with new information. And what plays out could have been really compelling, at least by Pokemon standards. Arceus represents a very Western understanding of divinity. The righteous man and the benevolent self-sacrificing deity are staples of the Judeo-Christian tradition. But one idea the movie overlooks is that even the most righteous can fall short. Damos should have betrayed Arceus, or at least been tempted to. Instead of a race to stop another bad guy, we'd see Damos torn between what he knows is right and what he believes to be a necessary evil. And if we really needed a villain, they could have kept Jafar in as sort of a devil on his shoulder. And once he finally came around, then Jafar could take matters into his own hands. But not before Ash and the gang even show up. The relationship between God and man is a subject I never would have expected to see tackled in a Pokemon movie. And the scope of it demands something more than this sneering, obviously evil cop-out. He's such an afterthought, he's the first Pokemon villain to actually die. No ambiguity, no resurrection, he just dies. And as for Arceus himself, the Pokemon equivalent of God? Who thought this was a good casting choice? I won't let humanity deceive me anymore! You've got Dan Green in your movie, and he's not voicing the deity? Now, apparently this voice actor was not their first choice. Several viewers have pointed out that originally, Arceus was supposed to be voiced by, get this, Vincent D'Onofrio. That's right, Vincent Edgar from Men in Black, 
Kingpin from Daredevil, D'Onofrio. It obviously didn't work out, so instead they got Tom Whalen. And I think this was supposed to be their attempt at another Mewtwo. Mewtwo didn't have a deep, booming voice. At least not until Dan Green voiced him. He sounded old and almost frail. Here, they probably wanted Arceus to have a more gentle quality to his voice, but also great power. A rage you would never know was there unless it was provoked. This is not that voice. Are you siding with the humans? This is the voice you settle for when Vic Mignogna is too busy. Out of my way! This doesn't instill fear or inspire awe. It makes me wonder why the word justice comes up more in this movie than the movie that actually has justice in the title. And actual Vic Mignogna. Justice! 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 It's just one confusing choice on top of so many others. Not just in this movie, but in the entire Sinnoh trilogy. I've read dozens of comments from people saying how cool it is to see actual continuity between these movies. And yeah, it's cool on paper, but in execution, it's a mess. Why was this even a trilogy? That's the question I keep coming back to. At best, it's an interesting exercise. At worst, it's a gimmick that only serves to hold two of these movies back. Movies that were tacked on to a self-contained story, thus inhibiting their ability to stand on their own. I ended my Rise of Darkrai review asking if its shadow would extend over the rest of the Sinnoh movies. And, as far as the trilogy is concerned, it did. But this wouldn't be Ash's last adventure in the Sinnoh region, as Gen 4 would see one more feature-length adventure in Zorark, Master of Illusions, next time on... Pokemon! Before you start writing that angry comment about how I mispronounced Arceus, here's a list of better things you can do with your time. Read a book. Ride a bike. Learn Japanese. Forget Japanese. Click the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter. Listen to the latest album by Nickelback. Make an entire video complaining about how I mispronounced Arceus. Play Stairway to Heaven. Throw rocks at trains. Watch all of Parks and Recreation on Netflix. Recite the lyrics to the Sonic Adventure 2 soundtrack. Or teach a robot to love.